Hello viewers, in our last lesson we had learnt how to draw the graph for the system of linear equations. Can you recall how did we do that? Let us have a look at another system now. Now, here the system with me is 7 x minus 8 y equals 11 and the other equation is 8 x minus 7 y equals 4. To get the ordered pair for both these equations, we make these equations into x as a subject or y as a subject and here in both the equations I have made x as a subject from the first equation x I get is 1 over 7 times 11 plus 8 y and for the second equation x equals 1 over 8 times 4 plus 7 y and by assigning different values to y we get the values of x. Supposing in this one I assign to value y 0, I get the value of x as 11 by 7. So, first ordered pair is 11 by 7 0, second ordered pair is minus 5 by 7 minus 2 and third ordered pair is minus 13 by 7 minus 3 and similarly for this equation I have ordered pairs as 11 by 8 1 minus 3 minus 4 1 by 2 0. Now, though it is possible for me to get the ordered pairs in integers, but that is too much time consuming process and in case I get these ordered pairs then what happens? It is practically very much difficult to plot the point 11 over 7 0 or of the type minus 5 over 7 minus 2, minus 13 over 7 and minus 3. So, that means there is a problem when we make the ordered pairs either it is too much time consuming or if we get the ordered pairs in the fractions it becomes difficult to locate them onto the graph paper. Now, let us look at another problem. Here I have drawn the graph for the two equations and the graph for the two equations are the first equation being 6 x plus 7 y equals 42 and the second equation being 2 x plus y equals minus 4. The graph has been plotted this is the for the line 6 x plus 7 y equals 42 and for the other it is 2 x plus y equals minus 4. Now, here what you find? If I extend these lines this way, these lines would not meet, but they can meet if I extend them this way, but the graph paper there is a limitation of the graph paper. They will intersect outside the graph paper that means, this graph paper is not sufficient to get the point of intersection of the lines. So, that is another problem when we draw the graph for the system of linear equations, the system may be a consistent system that is if we happen to plot its graph the lines will intersect, but the point of intersection may be outside the graph paper. Now, let us have a look at another problem which we face in plotting the system. Now, here the system has been plotted as 5 x plus 4 y equals 20 this is the line for that and the other is x minus y equals 2 and this is the line for that and can you recall how we did we get the solution for this from the point of intersection we plot perpendicular onto x axis and also onto y axis. Now, here I have already calculated the values of x as 28 by 9 and 10 by 9 which of course, becomes very difficult to locate from this point of intersection after plotting the after dropping the perpendicular onto x axis and onto y axis. So, here we saw that when we plotted the graph for the system of linear equations the various problems we came across. The problem could be that of the ordered pairs being coming in the form of fractions or the lines going outside the graph paper and intersecting outside the graph paper or if the lines are intersecting in the graph paper the ordered pair corresponding to the system may not be easy to locate. So, that means naturally we need some other method to solve this system of equations and the other methods are algebraic methods. Now, in the algebraic method of solving the linear equations you have already learnt how to solve the linear equations in one variable. 
So, that means, when we are going to solve the linear equations in one vari in two variables, we will be changing the equation into one variable and then by the routine steps of calculation we will do that. Let us have a look at a system of equations. The system of equations is 7 x minus 8 y equals 11 and the other equation is 8 x minus 7 y equals 7. For the first equation I am making x as a subject. So, x will be equal to 1 over 7 times 11 plus 8 y and for the second x equals 1 over 8 times 7 plus 7 y. Now, remember here if from the first equation I have made x as a subject, I will make the x as a subject for the second equation as well. But in case I am making y as a subject from the first equation, I will be making y as a subject from the second equation. So, here we got x equals 1 over 7 times 11 plus 8 y and x equals 1 over 8 times 7 plus 7 y. So, since both are the both these are representing the values of x. So, 1 over 7 times 11 plus 8 y equals 11 over 1 over 8 times 7 plus 7 y and on simplification I get 8 into 11 plus 8 y 7 times 7 plus 7 y. Now, we got these equations in the simplified form and now we go ahead to get the value of y from these equations. Now, here is the equation 8 times 11 plus 8 y equals 7 times 7 plus 7 y. To open the brackets, we make use of distributive law that is 8 times 11 is 88 and 8 times 8 y is 64 y that equals 7 times 7 49 and 7 times 7 y 49 y. Now, transferring the variable to one side that is I get 64 y minus 49 y equals 49 minus 88 and from there I get 15 y equals minus 39 and the value of y obviously is minus 39 upon 15 and that on simplification gives me minus 13 upon 5. So, that is you saw that first I converted both the equations into x as a subject and from there I calculated the value of y. Now, the question arises that how to get the value of x. Now, let us have a look again. So, this, this was a system 7 x minus 8 y equals 11 and 8 x minus 7 y equals 7. We have already got the solution of y as minus 13 upon 5. Now, this value of y can be substituted either in the first equation or in the second equation. Now, here I have chosen the first equation to substitute the value of y and get the value of x. So, 7 x remains as it is minus 8 times the value of y is minus 13 by 5 and that I have written over there that equals 11. This on simplification gives me 7 x plus 104 upon 5 equals 11 and from there 7 x equals 11 minus 104 upon 5 which gives me minus 49 upon 5 and therefore, the value of x will be minus 49 upon 5 divided by 7 and that gives you minus 7 upon 5. So, that is the way how I got the values of x and y. Now, this method where we eliminate one of the variables is called method of eliminating the variable. Now, can we think of some other method also? Yes, we have other methods also for solving the system of linear equations. So, let us have a look at this system. This system we talked about just now. This is 7 x minus 8 y equals 11 and 8 x minus 7 y equals 7. The value of x I got was minus 7 by 5 and value of y is minus 13 by 5. Since I am getting unique value of x and that of y, this system is a consistent system. And we are talking of that whether can we have any other method of solving the linear equations? Yes, of course, we have. Let us see what that method is and how do we go about that. Now, here we have to solve for 15 upon u plus 2 upon v equals 17 and the other equation is 1 over u plus 1 over v equals 36 upon 5. Now, here the system is not a linear system. The first equation is not a linear equation and the second is not also not a linear equation. So, what I need to do? 
I need to convert first it into a linear equation and for that purpose what I will do? I will say let us set 1 over u as x and 1 over v as y. So, that this system 15 upon u becomes 15 x plus 2 upon v becomes 2 y equals 17 and the other equation was 1 over u plus 1 over v equals 36 upon 5 that equation takes the shape x plus y equals 36 upon 5. Now, I have got these linear equations and from there I will get the values of x and y. Now, here I am following the other method that is I am not eliminating the variable, but I will be making the coefficients same. See once again the equations are let us have a look at the equations once again. The equations are 15 x plus 2 y equals 17 and the other being x plus y equals 36 upon 5. Now, I can eliminate x or y from these two equations. If I intend to eliminate y, I will have to make the coefficients of y same for both the equations. Now, here in the first equation the coefficient of y is 2, whereas in the second equation the coefficient of y is 1. And you know that in an equation if we multiply it by a certain number the equation does not change. So, let us multiply the second equation by 2 and the first equation we are keeping as such that is either we are multiplying it by 1. So, the first equation remains same that is 15 x plus 2 y equals 17 and multiplying the second equation by 2 I get 2 x plus 2 y equals 36 upon 5 into 2 that makes it 72 upon 5. Now, to get rid of y I will have to subtract these two equations on subtraction 15 x minus 2 x will be 13 x and 2 y minus 2 y will go 0 and 17 minus 72 upon 5. For your convenience when you are subtracting you can put the signs change sign downwards here, here this is minus and this is minus. After getting 13 x equals 13 upon 5 I get the value of x 13 upon 5 divided by 13 that gives me the value of x as 1 upon 5. But here remember one thing when you have made the coefficient same after that you have to take the precaution in case their signs are same that is either they are having the plus sign or both of them are having the minus sign then you have to subtract. But in case they have the different signs then you simply add up and you can get rid of one of the variables. But here our main equation was not in terms of x and y I had changed the equation into a linear equation for my convenience by writing 1 over u as x and 1 over v as y. So, let us see then how do we get the value of u and v. So, 15 x plus 2 y equals 17 and x plus y equals 36 upon 5 I have got the value of x that is 1 upon 5. But prior to getting the values of u and v I have to get the values of x and y value of x I have already obtained and to get the value of y what do I do? I put the value of y in one of these equations either this or this. Now, here you have to be little careful that which equation looks convenient to you only that equation should be taken. Now, here obviously, x plus y equals 36 upon 5 is a more convenient linear equation. So, I substitute the value of x as 1 over 5 in this equation for x is 1 over 5 plus y remains over there and equals 36 upon 5 and from here y equals 36 upon 5 minus 1 upon 5 that is 35 upon 5 and y is 7. So, solving these equations for x and y I got the value of x as 1 upon 5 and that of y as 1 upon 7, but can you recall what was my original equation? The original equation was 15 u plus 2 upon v equals 17 and 1 upon u plus 1 upon v equals 36 upon 5. This was changed into linear equation for my convenience by substituting 1 over u as x and 1 over v as y. So, first equation took the shape 15 x plus 2 y equals 17 and how about the second equation? Second equation was 
x plus y equals 36 upon 5. Since 1 over u has been taken as x and the value of x has already been obtained as 1 over 5, from there I get the value of u as 5 and 1 over v was taken as y and the value of y we obtained is 7, from there I get the value of v is 1 over 7. So, solution is u is equal to 5 and v equals 1 over 7. So, once again you can see because I am getting a unique solution that is unique value of x and u and v. So, this system is nothing else but a consistent system. So, here in this method what we learnt that to get the value of the variables I equated the coefficients and then went ahead by solving for another variable. So, prior to doing that we have to decide that which variable we want to get rid of. Let us take another, another example and see here the equations are x plus 2 y equals 4 and 2 x minus 3 y equals minus 6. Now, supposing once again I want to get the value of x in an attempt to get the value of x I will have to get rid of y that is right and how do we do that to get the value of y I will have to make the coefficients of y in both the equations that is first equation and the second equation same. Now, here the coefficient of y in the first equation is 2 and in the second equation is minus 3. So, what I what I am supposed to do I have to multiply the first equation by 3 and second equation by 2. So, multiplying the first equation by 3 I get 3 x plus 6 y and 3 times 4 is 12. Second equation it has been multiplied by 2, 2 into 2 is 4 x, 2 into minus 3 y minus 6 y and 2 into minus 6 is minus 12. Now, here what do you find? I have made the coefficients of y same, here it is 6 and here it is 6. Then I am supposed to look at the signs. In the first equation, the sign for y is plus and for the second it is minus. So, what should I do? Should I add them or subtract them? Now, just now we talked to you in case they are having the different signs you are simply supposed to add them. So, adding this equation to this I get 3 x plus 7 x 3 x plus 4 x equals 7 x 6 y and 6 y being of the opposite sign their addition will give us 0 and 12 plus minus 12 will also 0. So, that gives me the value of x as 0. Substituting this value of x in any one of the equations that is either this equation or this I can get the value of y. So, here I am substituting the value of x which is 0 into the second equation. So, what do I get for that 2 times 0 minus 3 y equals minus 6 and that gives me the value of y as minus 6 upon minus 3 that is equal to 2. So, here again we got the value of x as 0 and y as 2 and how did we do get that by making the coefficients of y same. So, that is the way we can solve algebraically linear equations, but can we think of some other convenient way? Yes, we have another convenient way and for that I am taking the equations in the general form. The equations are a 1 x plus b 1 y equals c 1 and a 2 x plus b 2 y equals c 2. Now, in case I want to get rid of y that is I want to solve for x first. So, I have I will have to make the coefficients of y same. So, multiplying the first equation by b 2 and second equation by b 1. Remember first equation I am multiplying by b 2 that is a coefficient of y in the second equation. So, first equation becomes a 1 b 2 x plus b 1 b 2 y equals c 1 times b 2 and the second equation becomes a 2 b 1 x plus b 1 b 2 y equals c 2 b 1. Now, here the coefficients of y in the first equation is b 1 b 2 and the second equation is also b 1 b 2. What about their signs? both of them are same signs that is plus in this case. So, what I need to do we have to subtract on subtraction I will get a 1 b 2 minus a 2 b 1 times x equals c 1 b 2 minus c 2 b 1 and from there I get the value of x as c 1 b 2 minus c 2 b 1 upon a 1 b 2 minus a 2 b 1. 
So, now the question arises that I have to get the value of y. So, that can be done either by substituting the value of x in any one of the equations or following the same method which I did right now. Here, since I want to get the value of y now, I will make the coefficients of x same. So, multiplying the first equation by a 2 and second equation by a 1, I will get this equation a 1 a 2 x plus b 1 a 2 y equals c 1 a 2 and the second equation becomes a 1 a 2 x plus b 2 a 1 y equals c 2 a 1. Now, here the coefficients of x have been made equal and the sign you can see what is the sign for these both are positive. So, that means again I will have to subtract and from there I get a 1 b 2 minus a 2 b 1 times y equals a 1 c 2 minus c 2 a 2 c 1 and from there I get the value as y of value of y as this. But in case we have to go like that can we have another convenient way? Yes, we have. So, here taking the equations we write x, y and minus 1. So, remember here when you are writing minus 1 both the constants c 1 and c 2 should be on to the right hand side of the equality sign. c 1 is on the right hand side and c 2 is also on the right hand side. Below x we write the coefficient of coefficients of y that is b 1 from here and b 2 from there. Then co constant terms which are c 1 and c 2 then y this is the coefficient of x and this is the coefficient of x from the second equation and then we repeat the coefficients of y that is b 1 and b 2. Then how do we get the value of x? For getting the value of x we will go down like that from this product I will subtract this product. So, that becomes x upon b 1 c 2 minus b 2 c 1 and here the product of c 1 a 2 from this product I will subtract the product of c 2 a 1 and for minus 1 upon I will take away the product a 1 b 2 product of this minus a 2 b 1. So, here we get a general relation for that how we can solve for x and y. Let us take a particular example and apply this method. The equations here are 2 x plus 5 y equals 13 and 2 x plus 3 y equals 4 and how do we write the coefficients? First that of y that is 5 and 3 then constant terms then that of x and then the coefficients of y. So, how do we go about? this will be x upon 5 times 4 is 20 here is that minus 3 times 13 that is 39. So, that is x upon 20 minus 39 and from y upon 13 times 2 that is 26 that is over here minus 4 times 2 that is 8 and minus 1 upon 2 times 3 that is 6 and minus we will take away the product of 5 and 2 that is minus 10. So, from here I get the x upon minus 19 will be minus 1 upon minus 4 minus 1 upon minus 4 that makes it 1 upon 4. So, the value of x we get is minus 19 upon 4 and the value of y I can obtain from here that is y upon 18 is equal to minus 1 upon minus 4 that is 1 upon 4. So, value of y comes as 18 upon 4 that is 9 upon 2. So, in this method we found that it is quite labor saving device and we can very easily get the value of x and y and this method we term it as cross multiplication method. Let us have a look another equations. The equations are 3 x minus 2 y equals 4 and 6 x minus 4 y equals 8. Setting the coefficients once again x y minus 1 and here I have set the coefficients as, I have as it was told to you earlier. So, the product of minus 2 and 8 minus the product of minus 4 and 4 that becomes minus 16 plus 16 
Similarly, 4 times 6 minus 8 times 3 that becomes y upon 24 minus 20 that is also 0 and 3 into minus 4 minus 6 into minus 2 that makes it plus 12 and that is also 0. So, here what do you find that x upon 0 is equal to y upon 0 is equal to 1 upon 0. So, if x upon 0 is equal to minus 1 upon 0 I will get from there x into 0 is equal to 0 and this is true for all values of x. Similarly, from y upon 0 and minus 1 upon 0 I get y times 0 is equal to 0 and this too is true for all values of y. So, here in this case we will find that we will get infinite solutions of x and y or what did we call this system as? This system was termed as consistent system with infinite solutions. So, here let us take another case now the equations are 2 x plus 3 y equals 4 and 4 x plus 6 y equals 5 setting x y and minus 1 and the coefficients I get x upon 15 minus 24 y upon 16 minus 10 and minus 1 upon 12 minus 12. 12 minus 12 is not 0 is 0 minus 1 upon 12 minus 12 that is 0 16 minus 10 is 6 not 0 15 minus 24 is not 0. So, that is here what I got x upon minus 9 is equal to y upon 6 is equal to minus 1 upon 0 and if I take x upon minus 9 and minus 1 upon 0 I get x times 0 is equal to minus 1 times minus 9 that gives me 0 is equal to 9. Now, is it possible that zero, can 0 be equal to 9? No. Similarly, y into 0 is minus 6 which is also not possible. So, this system here is inconsistent system and has no solution. So, let us have a general look. So, here the equations are this and we get the values of x as b 1 c 2 minus this upon a 1 b 2 minus a 2 b 1 and value of y is minus a 2 c 1 minus this upon a 1 b 2 minus a 2 b 1. Now, here let us take the case in case this is equal to 0 then I get a 1 upon a 2 is equal to b 1 upon b 2 and b 1 c 2 minus if b 2 c 1 is 0 I get b 1 upon b 2 is equal to c 1 upon c 2 and same thing I get from there and this system when we are having a 1 upon a 2 equals b 1 b 1 upon b 2 equals c 1 upon c 2 the system is consistent with infinite solution. But in case I get a 1 upon a 2 equals b 1 upon b 2, but not equal to c 1 upon c 2 such a system is inconsistent and has no solution. So, we are today we saw how to solve the system of system of equation algebraically and to test whether the system will have unique solution, infinite solutions or no solutions.